I'm crouched down here in the corner again. Uh, this is the DCCX CSB1. Um, and I made a, a video a couple of weeks ago about getting started with it, getting it connected up and, and getting to the point where I could drive and program trains. Um, I've been playing with it uh, for the couple of weeks since and I've, I've found um, a couple of things I missed in the in the first video and, and also kind of come up to a, a, a point where I'd, I'd like to expand on what it does by default, especially with regard to there being a, a roster available. What I mean by a roster is a, a list of all of my uh, locos um, that kind of within that list contains their DCC ID. So I don't need to remember the DCC ID of all my locos so that when I come to start a throttle and want to, to drive a particular train, instead of having to type in its DCC ID 25, whatever it is, and, and then start it, have a list of all my trains available, select the, the, the train by name and control it that way. And we can see currently by default, um, the, the engine driver app certainly kind of doesn't have that feature. If I go to um, select a new train that I want to drive and assign to a throttle, there is no list of trains here. I would have to go to DCC address, type my address in here, 91, whatever it is, uh, acquire it, and then I get my throttle. But there is a way of enabling or adding a list of locos in so I don't have to type those numbers in. And again, at this stage, this is still independent of JMRI, but it does involve connecting up to a computer and uh, at least running a, an installer, uh, which I'm going to do now. With my CSB1 uh, connected via USB to, to this PC, I'm going to go straight for DCC website, DCCX website, uh, DCCX installer, and I'm going to uh, click on using DCCX installer. And I think uh, fairly early on this page, here we go. We're going to download the X installer app. Let's just, uh, I'm on Windows X64. So we'll click on that. And this has downloaded uh, the, the, the software. There are a few useful bits of information. I have had to read through, through this. Uh, but I'm just going to get straight on and run the installer. And again, it's giving me a, a bit of a warning about an unsigned, unknown publisher, but I'm going to run it anyway. And the installer has, has started. So the first thing it needs is a, an, an Arduino command line interface. And again, because I have no um, Arduino software installed on here it's probably going to need to to do this so uh command interface it's not installed so very good let's install it and while it's doing that i'm going to read this if you're using an expressive or ST microelectronics device as opposed to more common UNO you need to enable support for these by selecting the appropriate additional platform option. Note that enabling additional platforms like several minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, allow whatever this is trying to do. And I do have an expressive ESP32. The uh, the um, CSP1 is based on an ESP32, so that is an extra platform that I will need. And I'm going to let that get on with installing it now and probably not film all of it as it will be quite boring. So it's messed around for a little while and it has now uh, installed the, the drivers for the ESP32. So I can click on this uh, select your device button. And here it's detected a couple of devices. I can see straight away that this is the one that I'm going to need. It's similar to the view in device manager. I can see that there are two there and, and the ESPs tend to show up as something along the lines of serial CH340. So I'm going to select uh, that one. And I'm going to tell it that it's a DCCX EX CSB1. And I'm going to go 
to select the product I want to install the EX command station I'm going to stick with the latest production release that actually gives me a bit of an upgrade because I'd look at the screen last time the uh, the, the the box was on I think it said it was on 5.2.9 something like that so it's uh, I, I'm getting a an upgrade of the to, to the latest version I could uh, I, because the, the the goal of doing this, of course, is is to um, provide a roster, and I have prepared a text file. It is here, and so I could just point to that file um, here and and do it that way. But I'm I'm going to do a, a kind of copy and paste this time, just to um, um, perhaps kind of s uh, simulate the the. the the first time I'm doing this, which is is true. So here I've I've got options as to um uh what the the the, the hardware setup of of the, the CSB one is. So I have a display. I think it's uh, I looked at the um at, at the, the the spec and I think it's 128 by 64 pixels. If if I get this wrong, I can always go through the thing again and install it. The screen does not right, so I'm just going to leave it as that for now. My motor driver is just this one. If I had a booster on top of it, I think I would I would choose that one. But it's just the CSB one, so I'll I will choose that. Um, I also uh, want to create my my automation.h file. This is where the 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 files the, the the roster entries will go and i think i want to configure this uh, uh set advanced config to yes so that um i get the advanced uh config uh options in the next screen this i'm just gonna leave uh um to defaults and and hope that the, that the installer sorts out but i'm i'm gonna grab my my automation it's now I've, I've just sort of built this up i've, I've googled how, how to do it and this is I'll, I'll make it available somewhere to copy and paste as well so this is each of these lines represents a train that's in the roster i haven't done my whole roster but i'm i'm doing four trains which will hopefully show up on the phone at the end of this so each line starts with capital letters roster and then a pair of open and close brackets within that the first option without quotation marks as a pure number is the dcc id next in quotation marks is the name of the Local. and then next in the look in the, in the uh the quotation marks this is purely the labels that i want to appear the various functions the, the various functions to appear as so if i had um uh train sounds for example this list might be a bit a lot longer but i i don't so most of the time you know I'm, i don't really use any functions other than lights so just listing them as function numbers is fine but just in order to, to kind of test the difference on one of them on the class 91 swallow i've changed the label for f0 as light and i'll see what that looks like when it comes out and they need to be enclosed in these x rail and end x rail headers so although i've got this saved on my computer and i could have included it as a, a file i'm going to dump it um into the the my automation.h file there and we'll see what happens so I'm now on to compile and load. Command station ready to be loaded on your uh, CSB1. Two devices connect USB port. Click the load button, commence the software. So let's go. And this might, again, be a, a slightly uh, longer process. So I will um, edit out any of the boring bits. And that's where I encountered a bit of a problem. I got this message about the uh, the, the device not being in download mode. Now it, it's ultimately just uploading a sketch to an ESP at this point, and it's it's not. This isn't specific to the CSB one. I get this error quite a lot uh, with with uh, uploading sketches to ESPs, and it it, it, it appears to be it, it's um, specific to, to certain computers. And as far as I can tell, it's specific to AMD computers. If you do this from an Intel machine, it will work fine. If you do it from an AMD chips chipset, you're like to encounter this issue now i found a couple of ways of working around it the first one is to, to uh, plug the uh, the device into a usb 2 um, uh, socket instead of usb 3 that can work also i downloaded the latest chipset drivers for my amd chipset mine is a i think a52 a520 something like that so i downloaded the uh, drivers for for that and then also um, I, I've done this I, again. Recommended. This was all through discussions on the DCC EX Discord. Um, I, I've also found a, a kind of a, a reset, a way of holding in the reset button for an amount of time, which will also make the device enter download mode. 
I've set all my settings and uh, and, and config files, and this is now uh, compiling. This is the first time compiled, so I've come from from kind of completing the the install wizard, and the, the first time it compiles, it does take quite a while, but it will eventually give me the uh, the kind of the compilation result message in that grey box, which kind of tells you how much memory all of the uh, the, the variables and the the, the um, sketch will take up. And as soon as it it, it does uh, puts that message up, the ESB a CSB one ESP device goes into a, a continual reboot. You can see that because the uh, the screen kept uh, kind of refreshing, restarting, but didn't get all of the lines, all of the, the network lines and everything. So, and it's given me this message about download mode. So this time I'm going to try again. Luckily, it doesn't take as long to compile this time. So I'm going to click load again. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to hold the reset button in. And I'm going to wait for that compilation message to come in again. And as soon as it appears... and one and two and release and this time the screen hasn't gone into that that reboot loop um it's it's stayed on and the um the uh, upload appears to be continuing because we haven't got an error message so it will take a little while but kind of once we got past that initial uh, risk of a, an error message appearing this will now complete and it will um upload my my new version and configuration of dcc exec ex command station to the csb1 heck of a lot of acronyms and there it is a uh, successful message and uh that's it uploaded some encouraging signs down here the version num number if i can just make the screen a little bit more visible uh, the version number matches the one that we just uploaded and also something I'm really quite pleased about is the um, the D the SSID and password haven't changed so I don't need to, to um, even though I didn't set any settings on there um, they, they've remained the same as they were before the screen looks slightly different I don't know if I just moved it slightly when I had the, the lid off or whether I put the wrong um, uh, setting in for the screen so I'll look into that later but at least the thing is up and running again it's on the same SID so I can go back and look at um, how this has affected the engine driver app. Back over here on the, the, the phone then I'm going to run engine driver and again I can see that the um, the the phone has, has, has stayed on the Wi-Fi network I haven't had to reconfigure that go into DCCX and the difference here if I click select and have roster my four trains are available so if I go and uh, select the class 25 for example I can see there are my function definitions that I put in the in the file let's turn the the, the track power on and I can see shortly arriving at platform one is the class 25 uh, which is now responding to its roster entry and just for comparison if I come down and uh, select the class 91 you can see there that the difference is that the um, the, the F0 button is labeled light for this one because that's what I put in the uh, in the config file I can of course still if I go down to the third throttle I can still select uh, trains by DCC address if I want to um, but it's just nice to have them listed by name I think um, and and so obviously I could go back and, and add lines to that file now uh, for the rest of my roster. I'm going to briefly touch on something that I missed uh, in the last video I made and that was to do with DCC programming. I was going to program my class 25 or I was at least going to read the, the, the current values from the class 25 and I went off and I googled, started googling CV numbers so that I'd know um, which ones to use. What I missed is there's actually a uh, NMRI, NMRA CVs list here and this lists at least all of the common um, uh, CVs. So, for example, when I was looking at V high and, and V mid, rather than having to go go off and Google them, all I would have really needed to do was click on 
V high and then it puts CV5 in there and, and enables a value. There's also a list of common DCCX commands. Uh, some, it's fairly obvious what they would do. Some of them, it's a little bit, um, will require research. So I'm, I'm going to leave that for another video. I think it is quite a useful feature, a nice usability feature for the, the ultimately the engine driver app to be able to offer up a list of available locos as opposed to me having to remember the DCC ID uh, of each one. So I, I think it is a worthwhile exercise to, to go through that upload, especially if um, anyone happens to have a PC that doesn't encounter those issues with, with setting the, the download bit. And adding that drop down menu for um, CV programming is, is another very helpful uh, feature. But there is another way. Once, once we get to the point where we are uploading new versions of uh, DCCX to the CSB1, we are at a point where we are connecting a computer to the CSB1. And because we're connecting a computer to the CSB1, there is another way of doing things, another way of generating the throttle and another way of um, programming decoders, which arguably is a um, um, more usable and more intuitive interface than, than the, the CSB1 alone. Um, and that, of course, is JMRI. And I was going to cover... Um, uh, the, the whole sort of getting started with JMRI from installing it on a PC to getting it set up uh, in this video but I've, I've, again I've <laughs> talked too much and, it, and it's gone on a little bit longer than I um, imagined it would so I, I think I'll cut this off at, at this point and start afresh in another video and, and, and talk about connecting the CSB up to a PC and using JMRI with it uh, right from kind of the, the installation point.